All right, this week we're talking about perfectionism and how perfectionism can sabotage our weight loss attempts or even our attempts to be, just be normal around food. So in this episode, I'm going to go over why perfectionism is so hard to uproot, why perfectionism can even get in the way of our process of becoming an intuitive eater or an enlightened eater, and some simple steps we can do to actually feel better. And one of these steps is going to be not wearing super tight clothes and holding on to the past. It's going to be giving yourself permission to uh, wear some comfier clothes that are more where your body is at. So let's dive into the content. I got a comment from someone. I'm going to read it, parts of it. I've been keeping my quote-unquote skinny claws skinny clothes in my closet so I can see them every day and be motivated. However, all I do is make me feel like crap. So I'm going to get rid of them. There are so many thought patterns I really need to change. And I know that's not going to happen overnight. So I wanted to talk about that comment real quick, especially around the um, skinny clothes being a source of motivation. Uh, First of all, a lot of people have sources of motivation that actually cause them shame. Now, shame, if you're familiar with this whole intuitive eating framework, shame is not good, basically. Shame causes you to feel bad, which then causes you to act in restrictive ways, causes you to not eat as much, causes you to cut back on hanging out with friends, causes you to self-criticize, and these behaviors in turn lead to deprivation. Deprivation is a biological instinct where you're deprived of calories, you're, you're not taking care of your emotions, and as a result, you naturally, instinctually, biologically, you, um, you overeat to, co- to compensate. So this is a cycle that we've talked about in previous episodes. I'm not going to go too much into it, but really be careful that the source of motivation for, in this case, skinny clothes or looking good or whatever have you, if it's causing you shame, if it is causing you shame, it's probably going to backfire. That's one of the pillars of weight loss enlightenment. The means have to equal the end, all right? So if something is causing you shame, it's probably not going to lead to a long-term result that really lasts. We need to do stuff that makes us feel good. Hence the piece of advice earlier about wearing some clothes that are a little looser. If you're wearing like a tight bra, you're trying to fit into these clothes, um, give yourself permission to go on a little shopping spree, get some nice, a little bit bigger clothes, um, and and uh, make sure your body feels good in the clothes you wear. Loosen up that belt strap, what have you. That's going to help you get into your body. It's going to help you accept your body and the means equal to end. So this kind of means where we, we start um, doing some stuff that might seem counterintuitive. When we're happier overall, we're going to get a better long-term result. So let's go on to the, the next point, which was why perfectionism is so hard to uh, overcome. And this has to do with when we started dieting, when we started um, actually our binge eating behaviors, when we got it into our head that our bodies weren't good enough the way they are. For a lot of people, this, this is around ages 10 to 15. Sometimes it's in high school. Very rarely it's later, but and sometimes it's earlier than 10. But usually around between ages, I'd say 10 and 15, just just kind of a rough estimate. Middle school age, you're starting puberty, you're becoming more aware of your body and what it looks like. You're starting to be more aware of societal messages. And why this is important is because children at this at that age, you at that age, are very, very impressionable. And there's a lot of... Um, implicit messaging, oftentimes done by parents, by parents. And oftentimes you might have well-intentioned parents who, uh, who, who tell you basically that your body isn't good enough. The most common example, I just heard this the other day, was a disapproving look by their mom. So this is why perfectionism is so hard to uproot. 
so hard to uproot because we are oftentimes modeled behavior of perfectionism by our very caretakers, let alone the society that we are embedded in. So you can imagine you're 10 to 15 years old and you get a disapproving look from your parents when you eat too much or you have too much on your plate or maybe you don't even have too much on your plate but you just get a disapproving look anyways. That sort of programming runs deep. It runs really, really deep. When you get that disapproving look from your parents, children, they do what their parents want. You know, you're going to start dieting to f and, and cutting back your food intake and trying to do things to modify your appearance in order to satisfy your parents. So this is important to recognize how deep this cultural conditioning runs in order to have compassion for yourself where you're at right now. So if we cannot see ourselves through the lens of, if we cannot appreciate the struggle, if we cannot understand the, um, the, 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 the toughness, what is it? The, the struggle of this cultural conditioning runs super, super deep. We are programmed like this at a young age and it might, it's probably going to piss you off when you start getting, when you start realizing that you have this programming in your brain that's telling you that your body isn't good enough and that you learn this from your parents, from your, from the culture at large, it's going to piss you off. It, you have the right to that anger. Going through that anger is a necessary stage of healing. And to really understand um, where you're at. Like, if you're just starting this intuitive eating journey, realizing the cultural program is going to piss you off, realizing how hard it is and how how hard it is to, to change your mindset. It really, really is tough. And oftentimes, um, a lot of weight loss programs, a lot of um, self-help doesn't really... Uh, put this uh, changing your thoughts into the proper context. You know, changing your thoughts of perfection is really, really, really freaking tough. And hopefully this helps explain why at a young age, when you were impressionable, your parents, well-intentioned, might have disapproved or given you looks, not even maybe even said anything. They might have said stuff like, oh, you're, you're fat or you're eating too much. But even well-intentioned parents who are just concerned about your health they think you're eating too much and they they don't look at you the same way. And so you as a kid respond. However, this comes back to the original point earlier. Shame. Remember shame? Shame Fs you up in the long term. So in our culture is becoming more and more aware that dieting, restriction, um, everything of everything of that nature backfires. When you whenever you try to cut back on food, um, in a in a in a restrictive, just do it. I call it the just do it mentality like Nike. Just do it, damn it. Just eat less. Whenever you come at a weight loss or a attempt from that kind of paradigm, the just do it paradigm, you're going to set yourself up for long run harm and, and painfulness. And, you know, be one thing if dieting and trying to change your body image didn't do any harm to you, but the attempts to try to change your body, to try to lose weight in a harsh, restrictive manner, cause binge eating. They lead to eating disorders. They lead to lack of self-esteem. They lead to a cycle where you try dieting again and you get harmed again. So this cycle keeps on going and going and going and going. And it's and there is a way out. There is a way out. And um, part of that way out is, is something that's called intuitive eating. Um, and now intuitive eating, I, it's, there's more information in po past podcasts, but it's basically where you mimic, I would say, this is my definition, you mimic the behavior and mindsets and internal body programming, uh, body regulation of a, of a person who's normal around food, a person who's normal around food they they don't diet, they can eat whatever they want. They're, they're pretty naturally skinny. Uh, or, or they're at their natural weight. They're at their natural weight. They're okay with their body image. They can go to restaurants and eat with their friends. And if they overeat, it's not the end of the world. Their their weight doesn't fluctuate that much, you know? Um, so oftentimes people think that 
they have bad genes, bad metabolism, and so forth, but really it's the dieting culture and paradigm that they've grown up with and not their genes or their metabolism. So intuitive eating helps is a is a is a step-by-step path where people unlearn some of this programming and start reprogramming them reprogramming themselves to be like a natural person with food. Now, part of being being an intuitive eater, I said something earlier that scares the crap out of a lot of people, which is that nothing is forbidden. You can eat anything you want. At our last meeting in um, South Bay, the Bay Area, you can go to weightlossenlightenment.com forward slash events and you'll see upcoming events. At our last event, we looked at a case study where a woman had lost a bunch of weight and she had no foods unrestricted and she could eat anything. Now, for a lot of people, when they hear that, that's terrifying. It's also a little bit exciting, but overall it's terrifying because they have, you have gotten used to many rules, many, many rules. And these rules give you a sense of predictability, safety, certainty, yada, yada, yada. They seem very straightforward. And when you take away all those rules and you're left with your emotions in your body, well, those are the emotions that you've been repressing for oftentimes years and then you have all this rage coming in into into hand because you've been culturally programmed in a diet mentality which just f's you up in the long term so all this rage comes you got all these hard feelings and now you're told to eat anything you can eat anything well that can be uh terrifying and the perfectionistic mindset can easily easily kick in on your journey um, to, to becoming an intuitive eater. What I mean by that is you hear someone, okay, I got to mimic the behavior of someone who's naturally normal with food. And so you, um, you, you start to, you, you might, uh, what's it called? Unrestrict all foods and then you get overwhelmed, right? So you give yourself permission to eat donuts, ice cream, cake, blah, 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 blah. blah. And you, 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 you start eating more of those foods and it's too overwhelming for you in the beginning. So that overwhelming actually might lead to a self-sabotage. So the alternative is, is to do a gradual approach of intuitive eating, meaning um, you, you start off introducing one forbidden food at a time. So something that you've previously deprived yourself of. Um, it could be donuts, right? So you have donuts in a controlled setting. You buy a, a, a box of donuts, you give yourself permission to eat them slowly, eat them mindfully, but eat them as much as you want. And you do that little experiment and you realize, you see afterwards that your cravings for donuts, the obsessions around donuts, the desire for donuts have decreased. You might need to do that one or two times or three times or, or however long. And you start to realize, wow, I can let myself have donuts and then paradoxically, very paradoxically, I don't want them. Remember, the means equal the end, right? If you restrict and you're being hard on yourself and you're uh, around donuts, that's going to lead to the opposite result. The means equal the end. So if you let yourself, if you allow yourself, if you taste the donuts, if you truly allow yourself to have them, then you paradoxically don't want the donuts. It's this weird paradox. But once you get the hang of it, it, it becomes a lot more natural. But on the other hand, that attitude of perfectionism that you got to do things 100% hardcore all the way, boom, 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 it can go into intuitive eating as well and cause you to be overwhelmed. So um, just to kind of recap today is if you are dealing with a perfectionistic mindset and you're using your clothes to motivate you and you want a, a little way to start shifting into a more accepting attitude, try, try, try. That's the key word, try. In weight loss enlightenment, the things we do are light, light, right? Where weight loss is often this heavy, burdensome thing and we're being enlightened from that burden. So anything that feels burdensome to you, don't do it, right? So like, but we can always go smaller. When we do things small, they're light. So if, if you're, if you want to try some, some buying some bigger clothes and that is uncomfortable to you, buy one bigger clothes, clothing, like a bigger bra or a bigger belt or a bigger pair of pants in, in, in relationship to the example where you're using skinny clothes to motivate you. 
Um, now, the other thing we talked about was why perfectionism was so gosh darn hard to uproot. It's not just this like, ooh, stop thinking about being perfect. You know, it's like, it's not just, it's not a, it's not a light concept. Perfectionism, you know, it goes deep. When you are modeled behavior by parents and society, even well-intentioned, ignorant, ignorant, but well-intentioned, we still get the effects in our body. We still get the effects in our subconscious brain. And it's hard. It's difficult to overcome, to accept. And part of that means realizing these perfectionistic thoughts are going to pop up. And you really, it's going to be a while before you get rid of them. And so what we need to do is really practice these skills of mindfulness, right? Like the, another aspect of weight loss enlightenment, of course, the yoga, the, the Buddhist whole side of things. That's why this little guy is right here. Um, sorry, if you're listening to the podcast right now, this is a, um, I'm holding a Buddhist statue or tapping him on the head. Anyways, so um, <laughs> these thoughts are going to come up and it really has to take um, a lot of effort but not too much effort. You don't want to go too hardcore about it. It takes a community. It just takes a gentle realization that these thoughts are going to come up. And if I can be mindful of these thoughts, if I can catch them in my awareness, then I can start to change some of my patterns, right? Stimulus does not have to equal a response. Automatic thought does not have to lead to a self-criticizing cycle. If I can be aware of the automatic thought and create some space, then I can choose a different reaction. And as I practice choosing a, as I practice pausing and catching the thought, I can practice then choosing a different response. And over time, that will become a habit. So perfection is not easy to deal with. Number two, or the last one, when you start walking this path to becoming an intuitive eater, um, it's not straightforward, right? Like taking a little bit of structure, going at your own rate, uh, making sure things feel light to you, um, really, really, really important not to bring that perfectionistic attitude into intuitive eating. And one last side note too, some people I work with who are starting to become intuitive eaters, um, uh, what's it called? The, it's very easy to bring a perfectionistic dieting mindset into intuitive eating. Like when you start giving yourself permission to eat food, you're holding back still. Like your, your, your body has been so conditioned to depriving yourself of foods that even though you're quote unquote thinking and allowing yourself to have more foods, you're still holding back. Your your body is still thinking, um, your body is still thinking something like, uh, what's it called? Like, when's the diet gonna come? When's this next fad gonna come? When's the when's when are we gonna stop being intuitive eaters? So your body's like is in fear, and it's that's still a dieting mentality when you're body is like not trusting the instincts um, it has when it's not in touch with the instincts it's have when it's doubting itself then that's still a dieting behavior it's very subtle but it's very very easy to bring that uh, perfectionistic just do a diet mentality into the learning to become an intuitive eating process so just something to be aware about it will happen you know these things run deep it you know bring in the deep dieting mindset into becoming an intuitive eater will happen. Um, so it's just more of a matter of not trying to avoid it, not trying to pretend that this is easy or that it's, um, or that whatever it's straightforward or not messy. It's, it's, it's messy. It's goddamn messy. So that's it today. Um, subscribe to the email list, check out the events coming up in South Bay and Check out the website for more information. Peace.